Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. I see Patricia's watching, um, Angel Dragon's watching from Florida and Laura from Cleveland. So thanks for joining us for Social Sunday. Just a friendly reminder, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in any of the um, cool projects, um, I'm going to be showing a, a quilt that I stopped working on a couple years ago. All of those links will be in the description. And as usual, everything that I'm talking about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And as you can see by the empty chair next to me, my husband Danny will be joining me on set in just a minute. He's just making sure all the technology is um, running correctly. So I think Sarah, I had a... Yes, Danny. Nice oh, thank you, Don. There's been a lot of comments. It's funny because I, I'm trying to grow my hair out a little bit longer, but then I told myself, the agreement that I had with myself was, okay, if you're gonna grow your hair out longer, you have to try some different hairstyles. You can't always just straighten it and put a tiny little clip in it, try something different. Um, so I, I'm not used to having um, my hair around my face. Normally I have it pulled back in a clip or just in a bun. And so this hairstyle, when I look at it on camera, it feels like it's not right. So I'm, I'm sure it looks fine. It just feels a little awkward at the moment, but I appreciate the, the feedback on that. Thank you very much. I remember in my 20s curling my hair and doing different styles, but it's been a really long time since I had to do anything different. And so I'm just, I feel like I'm learning again what to do with my hair really is the honest truth. <laughs> Danny's on his way. Um, while he makes his way over to his chair, I remember having a question from last Sunday's show about the hand paper pieced uh, quilt that I was working on. I haven't added to it in a couple years, but I do still have it. And because I used, Hello, uh, hey Danny, because I used the fusible papers, which we carry in our shop, um, the papers are still in there and everything folds just fine. So I thought I'd show you the pieces that I have. I finished three pieces um, for this particular quilt. Um, by the way, the link is in the description for it. And um, the finished quilt has about 12 pieces of various sizes. So um, some of the portions are bigger. This is the biggest portion for the center of the quilt. Is that coming up okay on camera? Yeah. Okay, so I decided to go with different, first of all, these are all tulip pink fabrics for this quilt. And I tried to go with different colors of fabrics for each portion. So here's the, Sorry. the purple portion and then Here's a green one. And even though there's 12 sections, some of the sections are, are really small. So I, I guess I started with the biggest first and then worked my way out. And Danny, actually, could you switch to the overhead camera really quick? So here's what the back looks like. And these are all my papers in there. And these are fusible papers and they're actually water soluble. So when the quilt is finished, normally with, um, English paper piecing, you, at least what I've seen online, a lot of people use cardstock and then the, the, the paper pieces have to be taken out before you finish your quilt. Um, but these are fusible and water soluble. And so I'm gonna leave these in. And then when the quilt is all finished, then uh, when I wash it for the first time, then all the little papers just dissolve. So um, as you can see, it's nice and flexible. So it's nice to work with. It's not stiff cardstock and um, I've just had these pieces folded away and hopefully <laughs> hopefully I'll f continue working on this quilt again soon, but until then, uh, it's waiting for me uh, somewhere in my sewing room. Thank you very much. Oh, Danny's. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, you're so vain. It's like Carly Simon said. I think this comment's about you. About you. <laughs> uh, today I also, starting in around June until the beginning of December, I get weekly um, CSA vegetable boxes from a local farm. And so this week I got still a bunch of corn, but I got six leeks. So I made a uh, potato leek soup, which I made before, um, but I popped the recipe in the description in case you're interested. And Danny's gonna put a picture 
Um, this is from the rep website where the recipe is from, and uh, it's a really good soup. I made a double batch, um, and I just freeze it in single portions, and then throughout the winter I have for my lunches um, uh, soups that I can just heat up on the stove. Randy says, wait, what? Fusible and water soluble? I'm, I may try paper piecing. Yeah, it's really awesome. The papers are on our website, sosweetness.com. Actually, I should have linked to them in the description. Um, but if you just type in hmm, fusible paper, um, that should come up on the website. I'll try to add it to um, the description after the show, the link for those papers. Um, Dawn wanted to know, do you wash the top before you put the quilt together? Um, actually, no, you can completely finish the quilt. Um, machine quilt it or long arm it, whatever your preference. Bind it. And then when the, the quilt's completely finished, when you wash it for the first time, then that's when those papers dissolve. I've actually made a smaller, maybe a 60 by 60 inch quilt. I can't remember the size, but I, I did use the papers in that quilt and I washed it and um, they, sh I mean, they should dissolve, but you know, the, the piece feels soft before washing. It feels soft to my hands already, but um, I've in the washed quilt that I finished, I haven't felt anything odd. Um, Lumps, bumps, uh, anything uh -oh. like that. Uh oh, I got you, Mikey. <laughs> One stand set, but we were trying to see. He seemed really. We tired him oh out today. We were trying to see if he'd be okay to stay in the room. Obviously not. So the kids are going to take him in the basement. Um, so while Danny's taking care of that, I wanted to share with you. This is not sewing related, but I do occasionally like to pick up some um, handwork projects, and so I found. I'm a sucker for Facebook ads. I admit there's a lot of products that I've purchased that I really love from Facebook ads. And this is one of them. The company's called The Woobles and they have these learn to crochet kits. And most of the kits are little cute animals. So this one's a little, a little dinosaur. I also got uh, this box kit. I got, I think I'll start with the penguin first because the penguin looks the easiest. And then I also got the lion, and I'll show you what's what it looks like. The kit looks like on the inside because it's pretty cool. And they look like cat treat or dog treat bags. To be honest, when I first saw that, oh, I thought yeah. that was like a dog treat bag. It's I guess it's a little reusable bag, so you can keep everything on the inside. And can you, can you switch to the overhead camera? Yeah, zoom or no? Um, I think so. So here's what's inside the kit. So here's the stuffing when your uh, project is finished. The yarn. So I read on the company's website that the initial kits were actual like fibrous yarn and they decided to go with this yarn instead because the users being beginners were having a hard time with the fiber splitting and for this particular um, I guess yarn that they use in the kits it's um, kind of reminds me of like the bottoms of t-shirts so it seems like it would be really easy to work with so all the colors are on the inside. Um, there's a little packet with the, the eyes, the little, the little bits over here, the crochet hook, here's the rest of the colors. And then I think it's, I must've dropped it out of my little kit, but there was, they, they start the actual pieces for you. I'll have to, I'll have to open one of the other kits so you can see what I mean. I'll open the little dinosaur kit. So they actually start the very beginning because I guess the feedback they received was that the, st the, the, the starting was the most difficult part. And so, let me see, I think it's over here. Oh, here we go. It was on the inside. So see, see, it comes in the kit already started. So all you have to do is continue on. And all of the projects have step-by-step -step videos and I already watched some of the videos and they're really short segments, like one to three minutes ish each. And each step, uh, you just watch the video first and then complete the steps. So again, um, this is the Woobles and the link is in the description for these. Uh, again, these are crochet kits. So Danny's second favorite part of the show, uh, when he's uh, on it, uh, we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We really appreciate you watching our show. Uh, we're really happy that you're here. And I really enjoyed before the show because I was sitting on the set for a while and watching all the comments come through, people chatting before the show. So 
uh, we really appreciate you joining in uh, for Social Sunday. Sarah, what do you think about Jamie's comment? Let's see. Uh, Jamie says, I bet Mikey will like the animals too. Oh, yes, he will. Sarah had a, like a stuffed animal on her desk of a little poodle, and uh, he helped himself to take it off the desk. He didn't chew it up, but he did take it off. and. He, he got, went. somehow he got the, there was a little hard plastic nose. He got the nose off. Mikey's thing is socks, though. Socks are like his little precious, his treasures. Uh, somehow he'll find a sock. I don't know how. And uh, he'll carry it around, around the house. Okay, so um, we left plenty of time for questions and answers. I know last Sunday the show went by really fast, and we only had a had time for a few questions. So if you have a question for me tonight, go ahead and type it in the comments right now. It can be either a general sewing question, bag making question, question about a notion or tool. Type it in the comments right now, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, and Danny will be collecting comments to put on the screen. I'll answer as many as I can. And uh, before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and that winner is Danielle Bionelli. So congratulations to you, Danielle. Congratulations. Please, please email me after the show. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Do you have the graphic to put on the screen? Uh, maybe, maybe. If you don't, it's okay. Let's see. Yay! Hey, it worked. Th there's my email address right there. And you can email me anytime if you have a question about something, you need help with a pattern, so sweetness pattern that you're working on, feel free to email me. Uh, I'm happy to help. All right. Um, you got some questions or? I have one so far. Okay. Awesome. Stephanie says, oh, by the way, I was, I meant, I meant to mention, I was watching Stephanie's comment earlier at the beginning, maybe around 630, about 30 minutes before the show started. And She's watching from the airport, so I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, Sarah, have you tried Ricky Tim's stable stuff for foundation paper piecing? It also stays in and dissolves. I am trying it on my tattoo quilt. I have not heard of that product, but I'm going to write it down. Danny, leave, just leave it up there for me one second. Yep. Stable stuff. All right, I'll check that out. Thank you for the recommendation, and maybe I can review it on a future show. Bobby says, brand new bag maker here, working on my first one. That's awesome. I hope it goes well for you. I hope you enjoy making it so that you'll want to make a second. Um, but that's awesome. Soap and Girl says, so Danny, a year has gone by. Are you going to try your hand at another bag? Um, no, but you know, I would like to do is pick fabric and stuff and maybe find a person on Etsy that makes some of Sarah's patterns and buy them from there and have a cool bag that way. I don't think I'll be sewing in the future. I could maybe make you one depending on which one you choose i know you're always talking about the widget so i'm not sure if that's the one that you would pick um what is your favorite sewing machine so i love my juki actually i have three jukis but they're all almost the same my first one was um the juki tl 2010q um great machine um i have reviews on all three of my jukis on my youtube channel and you can just type in juki in the So Sweetness channel search box and those reviews will come up. Lori says, have you ever mixed hardware colors? I don't have the right color of rivets and hoping they will be small enough to not look weird. Actually, I'm pretty sure I have in the past. I'm not a, uh, let me see how to word this. Uh, I guess I'm not too married to things looking matchy matchy. So I'm okay with using maybe a gunmetal with silver hardware or gunmetal zipper with silver hardware, something like that. Um, but I know not everyone's like that and, and that's okay too. Uh, I know sometimes you wanna get the product project finished rather than waiting for supplies to come in the mail or going to the store. So um, I guess that depends, but generally I'm okay with uh, things not matching perfectly. Jerry says, some of us may not know where this description is that you talk about linking things to. Could you tell us where it is and how to get there? I would be one of those people that doesn't know. Sure, absolutely. Actually, I'll let you answer that one. So if you're in a browser, say if you're using a computer, generally you'll see the video here. Then below the video, sometimes there'll be like a little drop down arrow or like a triangle. You click that and it expands out the description. And in that description, we'll have the links where Sarah's talking about. If you're on your phone, it's very similar. If you're, if you're holding your phone, just, well, I'm not gonna turn it on, but I'll just show you. So if you're holding your phone like this and you're watching YouTube, you'll see across the top the video and below this you'll see comments. 
uh, before there, there's another little drop down arrow. You can click on the side here and that will drop down and show the like the body of the description. And in that description will show the comments, not the comments, but the link to item Sarah talks Is about. Is it only for YouTube? Is Facebook about the Ooh, same? Facebook, or? I'm not checked out. I would assume it's going to be something similar, but I've not watched live Facebook, so I'm not sure, hmm, to be honest. Interesting. Laura says, just a comment. My dog heard Mikey barking and started whimpering at the speaker I'm using to listen to the show. <laughs> it happened to us last night. Sarah turned something on her computer and mm -hmm. through her headphones, Mikey heard someone laughing or something. And all of a sudden he starts barking. I'm over there trying to calm him down. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Roxy says, do you use the wider zippers like the by Annie bag zippers? If so, do you skip using the zipper foot? So it depends on your machine, what your feet what your regular feet look like and what your zipper feet look like. If you can get away with using your regular foot like I can on my Juki, just sew with the handbag zippers because they are a little bit wider, a little bit wider section of the tape to for the foot to grab onto. Um, you can potentially use your regular zipper. Again, it'll differ by machine. Um, I also wanted to mention just because I remember getting an email about it this past week. Um, so for handbag zippers, they can be either number 4.5 zippers, which the by Annie zippers are, or number five zippers, which uh, we carry as zipper by the yard. So both of those are considered handbag zippers, and both of those are about one and a quarter of an inch wide, the, the complete tape from one side to the other, um, just to mention. And um, yeah, it is handy if you can use your regular foot just because it's a little bit more grippy. On my Juki, I am a fan of the hinged zipper foot rather than the zipper foot that comes with the Juki sewing machine. Um, I really like the hinged zipper foot a lot. You know, I could probably give a demo of my, of a right on here actually to help. Oh, okay. You mean on the screen it, right it's now? It's going to load up in a second, yeah. Okay. It's got an ad going. I'm going to want to display that. <laughs> Let's skip it. So would the, what you're trying to demonstrate, would it look the same, the live view versus what it looks like a regular YouTube video, not a live? I'm not unsure on that, sir. Okay. But. Do you want to take the question away? Yeah. You see, it's got, uh, like the social center right here, there's a little arrow below the shop now. They put it so close to each other. But if you click the, this one right there, and there's the comment right there where it shows mm -hmm. the items she's talking about. That's pretty much it. Okay. Kelly says, when is your next sew along? I'm ready. Actually, thank you for the reminder. I think we're going to put out another vote for the next sew along. I know a lot of people wanted to make the acorn wallet, but I think I'll throw in a few other choices and we'll put it to a vote and I'll try to get that posted next Sunday for the show. Sandy says, what type of throat plate is on your Juki? I think I forgot to order that with my new Juki. That's a really great question. So um, on my Juki, the machine came, the, the plate that the machine comes with has a rather small hole. I purchased a different plate for my Juki. It's just a plate, it's called a plate for thick fabric. It still is a small hole, but it's slightly bigger than the hole on the plate that came with the machine. And what that slightly larger hole does is, because it's a straight stitch only machine, um, a lot of machines that where you can move the needle side to side or that do a zigzag have sort of a rectangular opening where the needle can go through, so there's plenty of space. In a straight stitch only uh, machine like the Juki, it's just a tiny hole and with the hole being that small, if you're especially using several layers of fabric or layers of fabric and interfacing like we do for bag making, sometimes the needle comes down through those thick layers and kind of bends a little bit. And if you have that original plate on your machine with the really small hole, as the machine bends as it comes through, it hits the metal throat plate and it'll, it can either bend or the needle can actually break, snap in two. All right. Uh, let me finish the, yeah, the answer to the question. So with the plate for thick fabric, with the hole being a little bit bigger, minimizes the chances for that to happen to your needle. Actually, since I put that plate 
on my machine. And by the way, I don't switch back and forth. I just keep that plate on and I can use it for a piece in quilt blocks also. I haven't had an issue. Um, with the slightly larger hole, then I haven't had any needle breakage. Um, I think maybe one needle since I put the plate on um, almost 10 years ago. So that's what that uh, plate for the Juki sewing machine does. Okay, go ahead. You can read. Oh, um, on Facebook, click overview above the comments to find the list of links. That might be on computer and then for phone. Just get the comment away. Is that Facebook? Yes, it is. Uh, on Facebook, you'll tap the screen to bring it up. And on the bottom, it says overview next to live chat. Oh, interesting. And that's where you'll find the link there. Ah, okay. Thanks. I'm glad, you, I'm glad right you showed that because I, I wouldn't have thought to click on that overview. Well, I've never used it right now, so I just <laughs> was clicking through stuff. All right. I have to go do something on the computer. Okay. But um, you can maybe can I next pick some questions? All right, awesome. Linda says, Sarah, due to health reasons, I need to reconnect to my account. Can you tell me how to get back in? Absolutely. So if you're needing help with your account, either needing help resetting your password, any other account issues, you can email me. And uh, again, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. And I'm happy to get you um, set up with that. Even if you can't remember your email login, I can... We'll figure it out, don't worry. Um, let's see. Michael says, Sarah, have you designed a quilt pattern? And if not, have you considered it? Years ago, and I'm talking about the early years of the So Sweetness blog, I did design a few quilt blocks, things like that. And I, I'm just not gifted at two-dimensional project designing. I, I don't know why, I just, I know what I like when I see quote projects online or on Instagram, but as far as sewing blocks together, I just unfortunately just don't have that gift. Um, however, if you're looking for um, quilt patterns to purchase, that, that might be nice. Um, we do have a Sew Sweetness Pinterest page where we pin lots of different projects, including quilt projects. So um, if you are on Pinterest, uh, my Username is so sweetness, and you can find all of our pins and boards over there if you're a Pinterest user. You know, I've told Sarah for years she should design a quote. Years. I don't. Months, days, <laughs> minutes, hours, milliseconds. Okay, Julie says, do you ever use vinyl in your projects instead of cork? Yeah, I do. I have used vinyl in the past. Uh, I will say I'm generally making two of a pa of a project for a pattern. Usually the first one is when I'm writing the pattern, when I'm taking the step photos. And the second one is usually when we're filming the video. And the first version is like the original prototype. And I tend to not usually use vinyl or cork for that first project because sometimes seam ripping is involved if I need to change measurements um, while I'm writing the, the bag pattern. And when we're filming the video, sometimes I don't like the added pressure of um, working with thicker substrates just because this sounds odd, but the way our cameras are set up and my sewing machine set up, I, I sort of have to lean back a little bit from the machine um, just so my head's not blocking the camera. And so I'm, I don't have like a really great view like I normally would with regular sewing. And so I think those are probably the two reasons why I don't use a lot of vinyl in my projects, just because uh, when I'm filming the video, if I can't get a close peek at what I'm doing, uh, chances of messing up, and I generally don't want to do that in the video. So um, I have a small percentage of bags that I've made with vinyl. Um, Generally, I'm using quilting cotton for most of the projects that I'm making, though. Betty says, did you get your flowers planted? They're actually coming this upcoming week. So tomorrow we're going out to weed because of the spot where the, the plants are going. There, there's tons of weeds there, so we're going to pull the weeds tomorrow as a family. Kids are very excited about that. I already told them, all right, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to go out there and, and pull weeds for 30 minutes. And they're like, ah. Oh but it's okay, 30 minutes will go by really fast. So this week the plants are arriving and will be uh, planted this week. 
Um, I used seatbelt webbing to make a strap for a backpack, but the seatbelt strap kept sliding through the slider and would not stay put when I tried to adjust it. What am I doing wrong? It depends on what um, you're using for the slider. I guess it depends on what pattern you're using. If you're using the metal slider where the middle bar moves, um, I can see how a really thin seatbelt strap might keep sliding. Um, there are some other items that you can use, which I've used for backpacks before, um, which have sort of um, like a locking mechanism. So when you adjust it, such as like on the park sling, um, it kind of locks into place. Um, we carry those in the shop. Um, the Dritz strap adjusters, and we also carry parachute buckles. I'm not sure, again, what kind of backpack you're making, what would work best for your project, but you can always feel, feel free to email me after the show. And again, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Sheila says, how much do you use your serger? I actually only use it for garment sewing, and I haven't made a garment in, in years. I would have to say, yeah. Heart. That's yep. what I was doing, heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't use my serger for bag making, though, so. Terry says, question for Danny, favorite anime movie or character? Hmm, that's tough. Right now, I'm enjoying One Piece. My son got me to watch it. There's about a 1,000 episodes. I'm about mm -hmm. halfway through. Um, so that's my current favorite, but I love Naruto. I love um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um... There's so many, it's hard to pick just one, honestly. I can name probably 10 anime I really enjoy. But I just, I, once I got into it as an adult, late adult, I'm like, man, I really, I loved cartoons as a kid. My dad loved cartoons as an adult. So it's, an anime is pretty much a cartoon, but probably better storylines for some of them. Mm -hmm. But I, I really enjoy it. Patricia says, have you thought about having a challenge of some sort? Uh, we were doing the monthly challenges with a uh, different task or assignment every month. Um, we're taking a break for those temporarily, but we should be back with those uh, monthly challenges next year. And we always announce the challenges in the newsletter. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Rebecca's question. I'm not too blog savvy. Where can I see it? Um, I'm not sure. If you're talking about my blog, it's at sosweetness.com backslash blog. Um, but if you were looking for something else, um, feel free to let me know after the show uh, via email and I can um, get you that answer. Um, new to fabrics that aren't cotton, do I need to change needles for, for trying vinyl? I actually have a free video on my YouTube channel, um, Needles for Bag Making, and actually you can just type that in the So Sweetness YouTube channel search box, Needles, needles for Bag Making, and I have a discussion video talking about uh, which needle to use based on what, what substrate that you're using. Um, and this video just applies to making bags. Kim says, what type of material do I use for insulated bags? That's a really great question. Um, there's a few different products out there um, made by different companies. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, you're looking for an insulated fleece. So um, the Warm Company makes uh, Insul Bright, uh, Pelon makes Insul Fleece, and I'm sure there's others out there. So basically it's a fleece with sort of a silver, almost reminds me of aluminum foil uh, on one side. So the shiny silver side is the side that you'll place um, against the wrong side of your lining fabric, assuming that you want the either the heat or cold reflected on the inside of your bag if you're making a lunch bag or a cooler or something like that and I usually just treat it as a sewing interfacing and again I'm usually attaching it to the wrong side of the lining with the silver side facing uh, the lining fabric. Wendy says what is the name of the quilt that you showed last week you said you were getting new blocks weekly or monthly oh yeah great question so uh, the company is called uh, their foundation paper piece blocks uh, these are the first two that I finished, and the company is called Quiet Play, so you can go to their website. If you just Google Quiet Play, that should come up, and it's the Galaxy Pattern Quilt Along. Michelle what Grace... What an awesome quilt block. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little okay. behind. Uh, I haven't made the August, the two August blocks yet, but I'm looking forward to making them. Michelle Grace says, have you thought of designing a fanny pack pattern? I do have one currently. It's called the Beatnik Waste Bag. I was kind of toying with 
maybe designing another one that's different, but uh, I'm not sure. I guess it's maybe on my maybe list for next year. Terry says, do you have a brick and mortar now? I thought you mentioned it in the past. Uh, we do have a physical small warehouse location, but it's not open to the public. We just use it for um, carrying all the inventory and shipping out all the product. Sandy says, are you watching House of Dragons? I guess I'll let you answer that one. I, I wanted to watch it with Sarah, but she wasn't interested after Game of Thrones. We watched all of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. and I thoroughly enjoyed Game of Thrones. Last season was a little rough, but overall, I still really enjoyed that series, and Sarah wasn't interested in watching, so I'm just going to wait till almost near finish and probably just run through a bunch of them. Yeah, I, I don't, like I don't know why I enjoyed Game of Thrones. I just... I, I don't have time to watch that much TV lately because Mikey needs a lot of attention. But um, And there's a new Lord of the Rings series that I think came on Amazon. Yeah. Um, which I I'm definitely going to watch as well. Joan says, is sewing with satin difficult? I'm making a bag for my nephew's bride. I, I don't have a huge amount of experience with sewing with that substrate, but if you have or if you often do um, let us know in the comments and we can put uh, that up on the screen maybe if you have a suggestion for joan about working with that type of fabric rebecca says when needing a lining for a utility bag such as for makeup or lunch what is the best fabric to use um i know waterproof canvas is super popular right now and i think a lot of people like it um not just because how it feels but because they can if they're using it for a lining they can generally skip interfacing such as shape flex and it kind of uh, by skipping that step makes the process a little bit easier so that might be an option for making uh, a utility bag or a lunch bag um, diane says when you're photographing for your pdf is it possible to have all the photos relating to the one fabric or bag I guess I'm a visual learner and process and follow the instructions better when the same fabrics continue for the steps in the pattern, just a thought. I think you possibly mean, I have a few patterns where... Multiple sizes? No, where I took my step photos and then maybe one or two of the photos was either wrong or I neglected to take the photo or maybe the photo was blurry. So when we're filming the video, I might substitute... Uh, the video bag for maybe one or two photos. I'm not sure if that's what you mean, um, but thank you for the feedback. I I do try my best to get everything in the same fabrics, but yeah, and in such cases, sometimes it doesn't work out, but I, I will try hard to be really cognizant of making sure everything is in uh, continuous fabrics like the video is is in continuous fabrics. Um, do you use a specific thread on cork? I honestly, I just use the fabric that I normally use for bag making, which is Aurifil 40 weight thread. Um, I'm usually not using a different type of thread. Um, I like the 40 weight and I also like how it looks on the cork as well. Um, Carrie said satin is not very forgiving, but Jane maybe has more experience okay. with making it successful. Okay. Jane said sewing with satin is not hard. Use a small needle like 70, 75. 40 weight thread is okay to use, uh, two and a half millimeter stitch length and serging or zigzag the seam allowance. Thank you very much, Jane, appreciate it. Let's see, Robin says, interfacing 809, uh, De that's Pell and Decker Bond. Is there a non-fusible equivalent for a vinyl tote bag that you want to stand up or would foam work? Um, I wouldn't say the Pell and Decker Bond is close to the foam. But if you're having issues with it looking wrinkly, I generally like, to, if you still want to use the Decker Bond, I generally like to use a layer of Pellon Shape Flex on the wrong side of the fabric first, and then adding the Decker Bond. It sometimes helps smooth things out a little bit, but um, if you like um, how foam looks, um, it, it would be a great option for a tote bag, the foam interfacing. Mary Jo says, when making satin bags, use sew-in interfacing and edge stitch it together first and don't use a fusible. Great tip. Thank you very much, Mary Jo. And let's go sew with Joanne says, use fine glass head pins and a Microtech size 8 to 10 needle for sewing satin. Usually a slight, slightly shorter stitch length such as 2 millimeters works best. And Sandy says, can you make a bag strap extra wide for comfort? Most of the hardware only goes to two inches. Oh, I I guess I hadn't thought of that. So you're looking for a hardware that's more than two inches. Let me write that down. 
Or maybe you can make those bag straps where it goes over it, you know, like for um, Ansel camera pouch, where it's got like a, a pad that goes to the strap. Yeah, a pad. I don't know what kind of bag it would be. Would yours. work also. I've done in the past, and I'm pretty sure I have a video on my YouTube channel how to make a padded strap. So, what I've done in the past, especially for straps, uh, big bags digging into your shoulder, I've inserted a strip of foam interfacing, just the maybe a hair less than the width of the strap. And then, um, assuming you're making your strap kind of like double fold bias tape, I just insert that foam in between the press layers before I top stitch the two long edges. And that foam provides a really nice uh, padding to the strap as well. So that can be an option, um, especially if you're having difficulty getting the hardware um, larger than two inches. Um, Kim says difference in 526 and 525 stabilizer. So those are the Pellon Decoville um, numbers. I'm pretty sure the 525 is the Decoville light off the top of my head. And the 526 is the Decoville heavy. Um, I was gonna see if I had any behind me on the floor, but I, I don't happen to have them. Um, if you would like to watch my video on the differences between Decoville Light and Decoville Heavy, you can find that on my YouTube channel in the search box in my channel. If you just type in Decoville, that um, video should pop up. Mary Jo says, shoulder strap that does not slip off your sloping shoulder. Oh, I see, so that's why you wanted the wider strap. Thanks for the clarification. Oh, I see. Um, Laura wanted to know, could you not taper the strap? Hmm, that might be an option. Although if it was tapered, that part wouldn't be able to go through the hardware, at least the wider parts. I wonder if you've tried on Etsy before for um, the wider hardware. Sometimes Etsy has a lot of uh, unique options as far as bag making supplies. Diane says, you are correct, Decoville 526 is heavy and 525 is light. Thank you so much, Diane. Um, a piece of rug gripper or shelf liner can be added to the underside of a strap at the shoulder area. Thank you, you know, so much. You know, that's the case. I bet that OD coat would probably work as well. OD coat's almost like a rubbery, silicone material. And I bet if you oh. tested it first on a strap, obviously, sir, you recommend or not, but that has know. a very similar feeling to something like a liner or something. And I'm pretty sure it would stick. It'd grip Maybe. a lot better. Maybe. I would say test it. I haven't tested it out, but yep. that's an interesting Maybe idea. test it on a like a scrap piece of fabric <laughs> and just put it over your shoulder and put the bag on that fabric, you know, and Maybe. see if it grips. Maybe. Or uh, like a little uh, tester strap could easily be made and just pinned to a body of a bag just to simulate the finished bag with the OD coat on it. Elaine says, I wear my bags crossbody to keep them from sliding off. I do the same, especially well, backpacks more. Obviously, I'm uh, generally using a purse, but I have had backpacks where they're slung over the shoulder. Park sling's a great one and goes across body, but I've had, you know, backpacks, even when I was in school, instead of leaving my shoulder, my shoulders do slip down, like you're saying, and they just want to come off, so I'd put a diagonal across. Let's see, Casey says, Danny's thought of adding a camera bag shoulder strap shoulder pad for a strap would be easy and nice it depends on the looks i don't know if that fits every bags oh maybe yeah but it is a good suggestion uh soap and girl says um thank you for saying that i was thinking about adding the iron on vinyl to a bag but wondered how it would hold up um was that in response to a question or mm. i don't see the soap and girls comment i can look for it I have used and demonstrated um, iron on vinyl before. I think I used Pellon and the other company's name is escaping me. But yeah, that's an option if you have some, say, nice quilting cotton that you'd like to use, but you wanted it to be uh, waterproof. The iron on vinyl is an option as well as the OD coat. Um, Stephanie says, do you guys ever see yourself carrying waterproof or water resistant canvas for linings? I think you were talking about something like that, different fabrics. Yes. I don't know what the fabric uh, name is Danny called. wanted to carry something like that. Um, I guess we'll have to look for a source. I, honestly, I don't have a source currently, so we'd have to get some samples and check some companies out. All right, sir, I think it's it. Okay, well, I apologize if I didn't, did not get to your well, hold question. Hold on, Jennifer oh. says, please, carry waterproof okay. and or wax canvas. Okay. Uh, is that the same thing or different? They different, are right? different, yes. Yeah. I'll, 
I'll get right on I it, sir. Do. I'll see what I can do. Get on it, Thomas. We got 16, six days, 59 minutes, and 48 seconds to get it done. <laughs> to the next show. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take a look and uh, wax canvas. We certainly have the space now to carry some new products like that. So um, that, I think that would be nice, especially waterproof canvas is really popular right now. All right. Um, thank you so much for all of your questions. Um, the giveaway for tonight's show is... Um, so I wanted to share my, which I use every day, my Kanga supply roll. This is from Minikin Season 2. Um, Danny, if you want to switch to the overhead camera really quick. So here's, as you can see, all my makeup on the inside. I can see, I have it, you know, organized by different sections, and I can see what's in each of the sections, and it's sort of um, three-dimensional, so you can, you know, put a bunch of things. As you can see, there's a bunch of lipsticks and things on the inside, and this is a clear vinyl, so I can just wipe it. I've got some makeup on that lining side. I can just wipe it clean, and there's a a little loop over here if you'd like to hook it on a, a hook or maybe on the back of your door. Um, so the giveaway tonight is for um, a Minikins Season 2 bundle. If you happen to be the winner and you already own Minikins Season 2, then you'll just get a gift certificate for that value instead. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, this is the prize and this is my Kanga su supply roll. A lot of, I have to admit, a lot of my bags are display bags and you know sitting in the basement but this is one of the ones that I use uh, on a daily basis so I super love this one and this is uh, tulip pink fabric all right Big so uh, the giveaway winner will be randomly drawn out of all of the comments left on tonight's show we add up all the YouTube and Facebook comments together and draw one randomly drawn winner so you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show and I have another question for you which you can type in the comments right now as an extra method of entry. Um, what is your favorite fabric marking tool? So let me know in the comments. Um, I really love friction pens. I have them all over the place. Um, here's a, a purple one. I like they have markers, different pens. colors. Yeah, I like the different colors, you know, dark or light fabrics. Uh, so let me know in the comments what your favorite fabric marking tool is. Thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye.